Would you get your Bible? Go with me to 1 John. Not the Gospel of John, but 1 John, chapter number 3, verse number 8. Hallelujah. I need you to tell somebody, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Somebody say, whatever it is. Whatever it is. I need you to tell somebody, whatever it is. Whatever it is. God can fix it. God can fix it. Tell them, whatever it is. Whatever it is. It could be something in your past. Maybe you haven't done everything you should have done. I don't care what has brought you to this moment. I don't care what has happened in your past. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. God can fix it. Somebody say, whatever it is. Whether it's relationships, your finances, whatever it is. There's nothing too hard for God. Somebody say, all. The Bible says all things are possible. Somebody say, all. All. That covers whatever it is. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. All covers whatever it is. Somebody amen. say amen. Amen. All things are possible to him that believes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Last Sunday, I ministered a word to you enforcing the victory. And we had church. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, but God wasn't done with you. Say amen to that. And uh, I told you that you have the victory, uh, but you have to be the one to enforce it. Hallelujah. If you don't stand up, somebody say amen. Amen. Don't expect things to go the way they're supposed to go. If you don't, if you don't do anything about your life, hallelujah. If you don't put forth the effort, find the right church. Amen. This ain't. This is not quickie mark. You don't pull up and have it your way. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. You have to put a little work into this. But our work is by what? Faith. faith, faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Faith is having a clear understanding that what we need is already done. Amen. Yeah. I say faith is having a clear understanding that what you need done is already done. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And you're just working your way to that place. Amen, somebody. You're waiting on the manifestation of God's promise in your life. And you understand now because you understand that it's already done. You already know that there are certain things that are required of you for the manifestation. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. In other words, if it's already done, there are things that in your life that you have to do to make sure the manifestation happens. Somebody say amen. So if you know the bank is around the corner, you know the bank is not coming to you. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And you have to get in your car, catch the bus, take a walk to get to the bank. Somebody say amen. Amen. But it's already there. Amen, somebody. You're trying to get to that place. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody say, God can fix it. God can fix it. First John chapter 3, verse 8. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Stand in the presence of the Lord for the reading of his word. First John chapter 3, verse 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, somebody say, for this reason. For this reason. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. But you might want to keep a pen, something handy to write some notes down. Somebody say, victory. Victory. Say it again, victory. Victory. One more time, victory. Victory. I just want to talk to you today about victory. Amen. I told you uh, last Sunday that the victory has to be enforced. Amen, somebody. Amen. How many of you know that you already have the victory? Amen. Somebody said that means that we're on top. Amen. That, that we win. Amen, somebody. We have the victory. God has given it to us. It's not something that we're trying to get for ourselves, but it's something that we're learning to live in and walk in. Amen. And so Jesus, the Bible says, that he came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. 
to destroy his power or his authority and his work. I need you to tell about three or four people the devil can't work here. Tell them the devil can't work here. Somebody say amen. Jesus destroyed Satan's power, number one. You ought to write that down. You ought to put that someplace that Jesus has destroyed his authority. Amen. He has, somebody say, he has no power. He has no power. So since he has no authority and he has no power, it's important that you do not give him permission or a place to work. Come on now. Somebody amen. say amen. Amen. Because he cannot work unless he has permission to work. Somebody say amen. And so for every born again believer, for every man and woman of God, the power of the enemy has been destroyed over your life. Can somebody say amen? Amen. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Somebody say amen. Don't give him a workstation in your life. Amen, somebody. You ought to ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, does the devil have a place to work? <laughs> we used to have a saying, if you let the devil ride, he going to want to drive. Somebody say, amen. The devil wants a workstation. He wants a place where he can breed from. Amen, somebody. He likes to work in deceit. He likes to work in lies. Amen, somebody. He, he likes to work in hate. He likes to work in unforgiveness. Yeah. He likes to work in foolishness. Yeah. And God knows he loves to work in unbelief. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. He likes to work in doubt. You're not going to talk to me in here. Yes. And so the enemy loves to work through the flesh. Somebody say the flesh. the flesh. Tell your neighbor, say the flesh. The flesh. Uh, when I start talking to you about the flesh, I'm not just talking about flesh and bone. I'm not talking about just the flesh you see. I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, the, the face that you have, your body. I'm not just talking about that. Amen, somebody. Because the flesh is a spiritual thing. It's a, it's a mental thing. It's a mind thing. It's a will thing. It's, a, it's, it's knowing the difference between having a spiritual mind and a carnal mind. Somebody say the flesh. the flesh. So the flesh is more than skin and bones. The flesh is about desires and lusts. Amen, somebody. Somebody say desires and lusts. The Bible says when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, the Bible says, it bringeth forth death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Y'all not talking to me in here. And so when I talk about the flesh, I'm not just talking about uh, your outer body. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about your desires. I'm talking about your will. I'm talking about your motives. I'm talking about your intentions. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about the secret meditations of your heart. That's your flesh. Because your body is not going to do something your heart don't want it to do. Somebody say amen. For even the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Somebody say amen to them. Somebody say the flesh. So when I talk about the flesh, I'm talking about the state and the, the, the state of the soul and the state of the mind. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. Write it down, verse 19 through 24. I'm not going to have you turn there. I just want to read it to you. Somebody holler, the victory. The victory. So you don't want to give the devil a workstation. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 9, for the works of the flesh are manifest. The workstation of the devil. He likes to work in adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings of such like, of which I tell you uh, before, as I've told you in times past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Now, when I talk about inheriting the kingdom of God, I'm not just talking about going to heaven. What I am talking about is that the kingdom of God is in you. Yeah. And there is an inheritance that you can take part of right now. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. There are, there, you have an inheritance in Christ, in the kingdom of God. But if you walk in your flesh, you cannot walk in that inheritance and walk in your flesh. Somebody say amen. amen. So many Christians try to claim the inheritance, but want to live in their flesh. Somebody say amen. Now listen, living in your flesh is more than you just, you know, doing something you ain't got no business doing in the hotel room. It's deeper than that. Somebody say amen. amen. It's really about living the kind of life, amen, that God does not intend for you to live. Living your will instead of God's will is living in your flesh. And when you live in your flesh, it leads to all kinds of other stuff. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Living in your flesh will lead to fornication. Living in your flesh will lead to adultery. Because what happens is when you live in your flesh, you'll never be satisfied. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. Living in your flesh will cause you to be alive. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Yes. Living in your flesh will make you break your word. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. Because when you start living in your flesh, your thoughts and your desires are all about you and not about God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And that's when the devil says, oh, I got a place to work. And I mean, you know, that, that, that joke of faithful, he'll punch you every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. He likes to live in oppression. He likes to live in depression. Tell somebody, don't get that devil nowhere to work. Don't get that don't devil nowhere, nowhere to work. He want to discourage you. How I many you know discouragement is of the devil? Yes. You're not going to talk to me. And when you live in discouragement too long, you are living in your flesh. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. That's your flesh. That's not God. Somebody say, that's my flesh. My flesh. Yeah. Amen, somebody. When you live in oppression too long, that's not that's not God. That's your. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. You live depressed too long, you start drinking. Right. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Amen. Tell tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Don't give the devil no place to work. Verse 24 in Galatians chapter number 5 is real interesting because he says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Amen, somebody. He says, You've crucified your own will. <laughs> somebody say amen. Crucified the flesh and the affections and lust. Now you cannot do anything with the affections and the lust until you crucify your flesh. Somebody say amen. So he says, those that are Christ, first they have to crucify their own will. Am I in the right church? Yeah. Tell somebody, I got the victory. Yeah. So I have to crucify my own flesh. Now crucifying the flesh is not, you know, me trying to stop drinking and trying to stop smoking and trying to stop this, that. Crucifying the flesh really means that I'm doing something about my will. Being in charge over God's will. Somebody say amen and hit it. Amen. Amen, somebody. So when I crucify the flesh, I want to do what God would prefer me to do versus what I want to do. Amen. Amen, somebody. Because part of you wants what God wants. Oh, yeah, you, you want the blessed life. Yeah. Yeah. You want the abundant life. You want the life of overflow. Don't tell me you don't want it. You want to be healed. Come on here. You want to walk in power. Somebody say, you want to walk in authority. Am I in the right church? You want to walk in deliverance? Am I right about it? Well, in order for you to be able to walk in that realm of life, you got to crucify your flesh. If you crucify your flesh, you won't be in sin. Somebody say amen. amen. Am I in the right church? Yes, sir. Somebody say, I got the victory. I got the victory. Say it again, I got the victory. I got the victory. And so sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we're not able to flow the way God wants us to flow because we have not yet dealt with our flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. 
you know, we, we think people are in their flesh with their shaking their booty and dancing and singing and, and smoking and drinking. But being in your flesh, you can, you can be real moral. Amen. And don't drink, don't chew, don't hang on those who do and be in your flesh. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. In fact, you got real religious people who are in their flesh. Yeah. Somebody say amen. If y'all familiar with the story of the prodigal son, amen, the boy that came home, he was all dirty, had pig stuff all between his toes, smelling bad, but the other son was in his flesh. And so when the other son came home, he said, what in the world? Why would you still want this boy? Yeah. Don't we do folk like that? Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. They've been out there, amen, somebody, not doing what we thought they should have been doing the way they, and we've been here trying to do what we thought we were supposed to be doing. Somebody say amen. amen. And as soon as they come to church, we got something to say about it. That's all right. You and your life. Somebody say amen. Because you forgot that God took you. Just like you were. Sure did. Filthy. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah. Undone. Somebody say amen. Amen. And the truth be told, you still got some stuff. Yeah. 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 Colossians chapter 2. Why don't you turn it real quick? Chapter 2, Colossians. I, I promise you I won't be before you too long. All right, now. Come on. Tell two people, you got the victory. You got the victory. Now, ready to go a little deeper? Yes. So don't, don't give the devil a workstation. Right. Amen, somebody. That's why prayer is so important. Yes. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, the Bible says that having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, trying over them in it. Somebody said he triumphed over them. So the victory of the cross, somebody say is my victory. And so Jesus spoiled principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in high places. How, how many here know that, that God got the victory at the cross? Yeah. Somebody say, I've got the victory. Yeah. Jesus spoiled principalities. The word spoiled in the Greek comes from two words, apo and okodo. Listen here, apo means to cease and to reverse. So when the Bible says that he spoiled principalities, he made certain things stop and he made certain things be reversed. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. When I start talking to you about the victory, when I start mentioning the victory of the cross to you, it signifies that, first of all, certain things in your life cease to exist. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's certain things the devil have to stop and desist right now in the name of Jesus. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. That's what it means to rebuke the devil. That's what it means to stop the enemy's dead in his trap. You have to tell the enemy, this stops right now. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. So the word, the word awful means to cease and to desist. And it also means to reverse. In other words, that means that the enemy has to restore everything that he stole. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. See, that's why it's important that you read your Bible and understand who you are in God. Because when you start living the life that God has ordained for you to live, you can enforce the victory. Victory. Tell somebody to enforce it, baby. And so the first part of the word spoil means to cease and to reverse. It literally means to depart and to leave. It simply means that he put the devil out. He gave him an eviction notice. Y'all will talk to me in here. It means to move out. I wish I had somebody here. That's why the Bible says give no place to the devil because God has taken him out. And the Lord says don't give him a place back into your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. The devil wants to find a way. He wants to find access back into your life. The second part of that word, okodo, means to divest. It means to strip wholly. It means to unclothe. He stripped him of all assumed power and authority and he restored it back to its rightful place which is in your hands and in your life. I wish I had somebody here that would get excited. Somebody say, I know who I am in God. You've got to understand who you are and whose you are and who it is that has blessed you and who it is that has saved you and who it is that has endowed you and given you authority and power. You 
ought to high five your own self and say, I've got power, I've got authority. You better know who you are. Because if you don't understand who you are, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. You've got to understand I cannot pour out until something has been poured into me. I cannot give something that I have not received. That's why it's important that you learn to be blessed and that you learn to prosper in God and in the things of God. Because if you're in need, you can't help nobody. You're not talking to me in here. And so when God says, I poured into you, I poured into you, uh, that you might be able to pour out to others. Uh, that's why it's important that the church prospers. Uh, that's why it's important that the church increases and has overflow. Uh, because there's people outside of these walls uh, that need what we have. Uh, and if you don't have anything, I don't care how much you desire to help somebody, uh, you can't help them because you are in need yourself. Uh, that's why God said, I need you to pull your yourself together and act like you know up in here that you've got the victory because there are things I've ordained for your life to do and you've got to get busy about kingdom business and kingdom work and so you've got to realign yourself and realign your faith with who God ordained you to be am I in the right place today tell somebody I got the victory uh, somebody say authority and Power. He stripped him of authority and power. The cross broke and destroyed the power of the enemy over many places in your life. But I want to talk about three major places. First of all, he broke the power of the enemy off of you individually. You ought to tell somebody, I'm saved. Yeah, yeah, me, myself, and I, he saved me. So you got to understand something right here. When I start talking about my individual salvation, that means that I cannot be looking at Joe and Frankie and Susie and worried about what they're doing. I've got to focus in on the fact that I've got to walk out my salvation. The Bible says, let every man work out his own salvation with fear. That means with reverence and with trembling. Understand and that it's by grace that we are saved and not of ourselves lest any man should boast so his grace and his mercy called me I'm not bad by myself I'm bad because he saved me I'm bad because he loved me you say well how do I know that I've got it I can feel him down all on the inside we used to sing a song I can feel him in my hands I can feel him y'all not going to talk to me again tell somebody I feel the Lord I know the Lord has saved me I know the Lord has kept me I know the Lord has bought me with the price. I'm in the right church. You ought to tell somebody today, today is the day of victory. I wish I had somebody to help me praise God for just a second. Tell somebody we've got the victory. The reason why you've got to understand that I have it over my own life is that if I don't have assurance over my own life, I cannot execute the second place where God has given me victory, and that is over my family, over my children. If I cannot execute victory in my own life, how can I intercede and stand in the gap and declare victory for those that I'm believing God for? So first of all, you've got to understand who you are and whose you are and the power that you have so that you can begin to teach your children and bring them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I wish I had somebody here. It's important that you know who you are so that you can help somebody. The third place is, is that it's over your territory or over your community. The places that you go. Somebody say amen. We've gone out to take territory. That's why the Bible says in the book of Matthew, he told them to go into all the world and preach it. Tell somebody, preach it, preach it. You can't preach what you don't believe. You cannot declare what is not in your heart. That's why you've got to know the gospel. Somebody say, I got good news. That's right, I got good news. That's why you can't be all sad and wounded, hanging your harp in the willow trees like you don't have nothing to shout about, like you don't have nothing to dance about. Because the Bible says that he spoiled principalities and he made a show of them openly. That means he stripped the enemy of his power, stripped him of all of his authority, and he gave it back to the rightful place to which it belonged. He was kind enough, merciful enough, graceful enough to bestow it upon you and you. And you always had somebody. 
somebody in here. I'm here to tell you, you better let the devil know, yes, I am bad. John Paul said, I didn't come with the excellence of words. I came with the demonstration of power. You better hold your head up. I wish I had somebody here. This is not the time for timidity. For the Bible says he did not give us a spirit of fear. But a power. Somebody say power, power. That's what's wrong with the church right now. We don't act like we got any power. Somebody say amen. You can't walk in power and walk in your flesh. Because his power is seated and rooted in his will. When you decide to walk in the will of God, you can exercise the power of God. Am I in the right church? Somebody say, I got the victory. I got it. Am I in the right place? Somebody, I got it. I got it. I got it. If I don't have it, I'm getting it right now. I'm about to get it. I'm about to get it. That's why it's important, amen, that you learn to crucify your flesh. Paul said, I mortify my flesh. I die daily. Every day I get up and say, not my will, but your will be done. Every day I got to get up and say, Lord, not what I want to do, but what you want to do. Because God want to use you to help somebody. God want to use you to deliver somebody. God want to use you to bless somebody. God want to use you to heal somebody. God want to use you to change somebody's life. You are an agent of change. But that's why the devil is trying to wreak havoc in your life. Because if he knows that you have closed his workstation, you are free to fly. You ought to tell somebody we're free to navigate, baby. So, somebody say the victory. The victory. The victory. Tell somebody, I've been moved into position. I've been moved into position. Tell somebody else, I've been moved in position. I've been moved in position. Tell three people, we're taking territory. We're taking territory. We're taking territory. And so the Bible says we take it territory. That, that, that he spoiled principalities. Satan was moved out. To spoil means to evict, to strip, to move out, to spoil. And he moved us in. Somebody say he moved you in. The Bible says that our position is with him far above principalities and powers. Write down Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read it to you. I don't want you to just take my word for it. Tell somebody I've been moved in. Say it again. I've been moved in. The devil's been moved out. And we've been moved in. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 20, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Ephesians 2 and 6, somebody say amen to that. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 6, that he has raised us up together and made us to sit with him. Now, the Bible says that he has raised up and he is seated at the right hand of God. Ephesians 2 and 6 says we've been raised up and seated with him. That means that we've been moved in with him. So Jesus moved the devil out and moved himself in and then moved you in with him. Am I in the right church? Yes, sir. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody I got the victory. Got the Tell somebody you better know your position. Know your Tell your neighbor say know your position. Know your position. And so we stand in victory from our position. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody stand strong. Amen. Tell them again stand strong. Amen. Tell them stand strong. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10 says finally my brethren finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand somebody say stand that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand stand. Tell somebody we wrestle, we wrestle. not against flesh and blood, not against flesh 
Say it again. We wrestle. Listen, somebody say the victory. Now listen, when the devil stole uh, the authority from Adam and Eve in the garden, he stole it away. He tricked it away. Amen, somebody. But now he, he did it through deception. You, you understand what I'm saying? But now, listen, listen, when you get in the word of God, when, when you, this is what the devil is afraid of. He don't want to wrestle with you. Tell somebody he don't want to wrestle with you. When you start getting in the word of God, when you start getting in the presence of God, when you start praying, when you start getting an understanding, when you start walking in wisdom, the enemy cannot deceive you. Amen, somebody. He can't trick you out of it. See, that, that, that's why you can't play around and not know the word. That's why it's important that you be in church. That's why it's important you get word like this, because it equips you with understanding and with knowledge. Somebody say amen. And when you get equipped with knowledge and understanding, he can no longer deceive you. Amen. He has to now wrestle it away from you. You're not talking to me. He has to wrestle it. He has to fight you for it. You're not talking to me here. Since, listen, the Bible says he come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Y'all give me a few minutes. I'm trying to help you in here. Tell somebody he's trying to wrestle you with it. He's trying to take it from you. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Uh, he's trying to wrestle it away from you. That's what happens when you get the word of God. The Bible says the enemy comes immediately uh, to try to take it away. Uh, that's why understanding is so important. Uh, that's why you gotta stay in the word. Uh, you can't let what you know slip because the enemy knows that if you let it slip he can deceive you but if he cannot deceive you he's got to fight you tell somebody you got to fight you got to fight and so the bible says since you get an understanding and you walk in the wisdom and you're walking in the word of god and you're starting to grow he says you got to put on the whole armor of god so that you can withstand every fiery dart of the devil listen he's not trying to shoot at you because you are nobody it's because you accidentally slipped up and learned something you're not going to talk to me in here faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God now you believe something and know something that you did not know before and the devil wants to fight you for it but you ought to tell that devil I have a listen don't let the devil wrestle it away from you. But what you've got to learn how to do is that you've got to tear down his stronghold. Tell somebody this is a battle. And so in the battle, the devil is trying to wrestle away from you the blessings of God, the things of God, the principles of God, the purpose of God, the destiny that God has over your life. He's trying to take it from you. Amen, somebody. But the Bible says that we tear down strongholds. Amen, somebody. Bringing every thought into captivity. Tell somebody, tear down the strongholds. We fight with the weapon of faith because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Pulling down every stronghold. Bringing down every illusion that the enemy would try to bring up against us. You ought to tell the devil the fight is on. That's why the Bible says you've got to fight the good fight of faith. You've got to stand firm. You've got to hold on to the foundation, which is Christ. Somebody say amen to you. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Fight for it. Fight, fight. You better fight for your family. Fight for your vision. Fight for your dream. Fight for your purpose. And you gotta, you can't fight in your flesh. You got to fight in the spirit. Always I had somebody here. You got to open up your Bible and fight. You got to get on your knees and fight. You got to turn down your plate and fight. You got to lift your hands and worship and fight. You got to come to church when you don't want to come and right, fight. You got to stand in the gap and fight. You got to help somebody else when you're hurting and fighting. You got to do what you don't feel like doing and fight. You ought to tell somebody I'm fighting a fight because the devil cannot get ground in my life because I have the victory. Yeah. Oh, listen, I got to go. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you better bind it and you better loose it. Take your neighbor, say neighbor, bind and loose. Tell them bind and loose. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19, he says, I'll give you the key, keys of the kingdom uh, of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16, 19. Y'all got that? 
Somebody say, you better loose it. And you better bind it. To bind means to restrict or to restrain. Somebody say amen. And so you got the victory, but you have to also restrain the enemy. Tell somebody, you better bind it. First place you've got to bind the enemy is over your own heart and over your own mind. And your, you ought to tell the level you bound. You bound. Wow. Tell somebody, bind the enemy. Bind. You can restrain the enemy, first of all, by living right. Amen. That in itself is a restraint because he can't find access into your life. Being a man or woman of character. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. First of all, you, 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 you can bind the enemy by deleting sloppy living out of your life. Amen. Just by being disciplined, there's certain things that can't, even in the natural, when you take care of your natural body, there's certain things that can't get access because of the kind of health and, 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 and strength that you have in your natural body. When you don't take care of your natural body, it leaves access open to disease and all kinds of different things into your body. Am I right? Well, when you take care of your spiritual life, there's certain things that can't even get access. Yeah. 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 Somebody say amen. Yeah. So just by living right, you can bind the enemy. Y'all not going to talk to me. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody you better speak to it. Yeah. To bind means to restrict. Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 3, verse 27. Write it down. You don't have to read it. You can take to it later. It says, no man can enter a strong man's house. Okay and spoil his goods, take his goods, except he first bind the strong man. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. And so you cannot take territory. Listen to me here. Remember I told you the Bible says that Jesus in Colossians said, the Bible says he spoiled principality. That means that he had to what? Bind the strong man. Mark says you cannot spoil the enemy's goods unless you first what? Bind the strong man. Somebody say amen. amen. And so you've got to bind the devil. Am I in the right church? Amen. You better bind. I said, you, if you don't bind the enemy, you cannot take his territory. When you get home, you should lay hands on every window, every door, and bind. Y'all not going to talk to me. I know it sounds crazy, but you ought to tell the enemy you can't live here. You ought to bind his access. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When, when you get home, get your wallet out. Get your purse out. Amen. Lay hands on your purse. Your wallet say, I bind you. You can't touch my finance. Get your checkbook out. Get your bills out. Get, amen. Somebody, you ought to pray over all your stuff and say, this belongs to God. Amen. I dare you to do it. Oh, oh, get all of them crumb snatches. Them folk that be drinking a gallon of milk a day. You know what I'm talking about, them kids. Want well, iPads. Flat screens. Want well, $500 shoes. But they don't want the Holy Ghost. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. You are the body system. I'm binding the devil right now. Somebody say amen. I'm behind the devil. The Bible says that you will cast out devils. That's what the book say. I said that's what the book say. Amen. But if you don't exercise it, somebody say amen. That would make a good sense. Cut those hands and give God praise. Tell somebody you better bind it. To loose means to free up. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. How many understand that it takes place in the heavenly realms first? So what God is telling you is, is that it's going to take place spiritually, but you got to speak it in the earth. Somebody say amen. Once you speak it in earth, God said, I'm going I'm to take care of it spiritually. Amen. But if you don't speak to it, To loose means somebody say free up, free up, free up. To have liberty. Somebody say liberty. liberty. To loose 
means to give legitimate license to. Somebody say amen. amen. To give legitimate license to. How many of you know that there can be things running in your life that does not have a legitimate license to be in your life? Somebody say amen. amen. And so what you have to do is that you have to bind everything that doesn't... Have, have you ever seen somebody pulled over? Amen, somebody. Their car is on the, on the, on the tow truck. Amen. Right. And they're in the back of the car. Right. Because their license is suspended. Or they didn't have a legitimate license to drive. Am I making good sense in here? Amen. What happens? The devil gets rebuked, right? And taken off to jail. And said, so you cannot drive here until you get a what? Legitimate license. How many of you know the devil don't, can never get a legitimate license? Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. Stop giving legitimate licenses to stuff in your life that don't belong in your folk. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen. You got to stop giving your life. You cannot give your life or give access to people who don't do nothing for you. Somebody say amen. amen. Amen, somebody. They end your life illegitimately. It was never a connection God ordained in the first place. Y'all not going to talk to me again. Somebody say amen. amen. And every time you're with them, your heart broke, you broke. Somebody say amen. amen. They drain in you. <coughs> amen, somebody. You ought to revoke their license. Somebody say amen. amen. Whatever you bind, bind shall be what? Bound. Whatever you lose, watch what you lose. Now, as I told you, your lifestyle can bind certain things. Just by the way you live, it, it, it cuts off access. But the way you live can also lose. Listen to me real carefully. Your words, your lifestyle can lose things in your life that you don't want lose. Somebody say amen. That's why you got to watch what you say. You got to watch how you live. Somebody say amen. You got to watch who you live with. You got to watch what you live with. Somebody say amen. Tell two, tell two people I got victory because of the blood. I got to give you this and I got to go. Listen, listen real quickly. Real quickly. Get this in your heart. The blood, number one, the Bible says it gives you access. You've been, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, you've been drawn nigh because of the blood. Yeah. The blood represents the life. Not your life, but the life of Christ. In the Old Testament, when God delivered the children of Israel out of the land of, of Egypt, how many of you understand that the blood had to be applied before they could leave? How many of you know the blood gave them access to leave? Because of the blood, the death angel could not come wherever the blood was. I'm somebody say I'm covered by the blood. So an innocent life was 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 shed, and and, and blood was spread, was uh, uh, spilled so that you could have life. That make a good sense. Somebody say because of the blood. Now because of the blood, I have been given access to God. I've been able to, to leave. And the Bible says that when they left, they stripped uh, Egypt. So listen, the blood not only gives you access, but it allows you to leave with the spoils. So how many can understand the blood gives you the blessed life? Amen. 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 Some of you right now living beneath your means because you don't understand the power of the blood of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. amen. So when they left out of Egypt, because of the blood, they left with everything. Not only did they leave with everything, but how many understand their clothes didn't wear out? There was no feeble. There was no sickness. There was no disease among them. Somebody say amen. amen. They had strength. They didn't even know they had. Come on here. Amen. How many of you know 
know that when God frees you, he frees you permanently so that the devil can never put his hand on you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And so when the children of Israel got free out of the land of Egypt, how many understand now the devil had to wrestle? At first, he had had them enslaved through deception. But once they got free, now he had to fight them. Somebody say amen. amen. Before he had them enslaved, no weapons, no swords, no chariots. He had them working with no threat. But once they got free, Pharaoh and his... Y'all not going to talk to me. Somebody say amen. amen. And so the children of Israel see the army. They are all up in arms. They are afraid. Amen. Somebody. But how many here know that when God saved you, he did not save you for the devil to have you? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. How many here know that God delivered the children and the enemy could not follow them into their destiny? Ooh, come on now. Somebody say amen. But God delivered them out so they can live a different kind of life. Am I right about it? Are y'all with me? Amen. He delivered them out so they can live a different life. So he did not save you so you can live the way you was living like you was living in Egypt. The children of Israel comes out. They go into the land. But they refuse to live a new life. And so the death that wasn't supposed to happen, listen to me real quickly, I'm trying to help you. The death that wasn't supposed to happen, because they were supposed, listen, listen, if they hadn't been covered by the blood, they would have died in Egypt. Somebody say amen. amen. The death that was never supposed to happen, happened anyway. Not one, not two, millions of them died. Not by the hand of the enemy. Y'all don't want to hear me yet here. You ought to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't play with God. Two people out of millions. Two out of millions. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't waste your life. Look up here at me. Don't waste your life. This is your hour like never before. Somebody say amen. amen. This is the time to get in and rededicate yourself to God. This is the time to get busy doing the thing that God ordained for you to do. Somebody say amen. This is the time for you to realize the fullness of the blessings of God and not let the enemy pull you further from God. Amen. Somebody say y'all are for quiet. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. You ought to tell somebody I got the victory. Now it's the season that you act like it. Now is the day that you bind the enemy. Now is the day that you lose prosperity and healing and deliverance. You can lose it in your own life. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> you can lose it right now. You ain't got to wait till next week. The sooner you bind it, the sooner you lose it, the sooner you go into the place you got to go into. Come on, stand on your feet. Give God a hand praise. Come on. Real quick, come on. Can I tell you something? You know why God give you pastors? Because he equips them with stuff you don't have. Okay, maybe you don't believe me. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
when you listen to, the, to your leaders, they're able to impart to you. Not because we bad, but because God gave us something that we didn't even ask for. We're anointed to do it. The Bible says, to whom much is given. Amen. So I'm required to impart to you. That's why God gives you, that's why you have to submit to leadership. Because you can't get what you need without it. If you got a problem with it, take it to God. And you know you think you're bad, you don't need pastor, you don't need this. It's all right. Somebody say amen. But if you're trying to go to another level, you need somebody to pour into you. Amen, somebody. And you need somebody that can give you something that you don't have. That's why I try to tell you leaders, you leaders who've been called, you got to spend time with God because you cannot give to somebody something that you don't have. You can't pray for somebody to get the Holy Ghost and you don't have the... Holy Ghost. You can't give somebody the word and you don't have the... Word. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. That's why you got to come to church because when your tank is empty, this is the only place you can get filled up. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's the way God ordained it. Amen, somebody. Amen. But God does not fill you up and empower you so you can go home and don't do nothing. It's so you can reach back and pour into somebody else. Because I can guarantee you that there is somebody that you can help. Amen. That make a good sense. Thank you. That don't look good. That make a good sense. So God gives you pastors after his own heart. How many here know that it is the heart of God to see the needs of the people met? Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. So you want your leader to have everything that they can have so they can pour it back into you. Amen. Somebody say amen. This is not arrogance. This is telling you that God gives your leaders stuff that you don't have so that you can be a leader too, so that you can give stuff to people that they don't have. Amen. Amen, somebody. That's why you can go to your job. Listen. Be at your desk. And somebody will walk up to you and say, listen, I'm going through. Would you pray for me? And you're able to give them something they don't have. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. When you can release a spiritual blessing into their life, you can give them something that they don't have. You can go to the hospital. The Bible says, call for the elders. There's any sick among you. Hey, Amen, somebody. You walk in God's healing. And you're able to walk into the sick room, close the door, pray for them, and give them something that they don't have. The greatest gift that you have is the gospel. Somebody say amen. Amen. Jesus told the, the disciples of Matthew chapter 16, he says, whoever sins you forgive, they are what? Forgiven. Y'all not going to talk to me. How many you know when you give people in a place where they can be forgiven of their sins, they can be healed? Amen, somebody. Y'all not going to talk to me. Would you clap your hands and give God a praise? Listen, I got to go.